Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I've got a Val Policella with me today, quite a smart looking Val Policella. Uh, it's uh, Tedeschi's uh, Maternigo 2014. Maternigo is the, uh, the name of the estate that the, the, the grapes are from. Um, 2014 vintage, weighing in at a whopping 14.5% alcohol. Who ever said that Val Policella was uh, light, easygoing wine? Well, I'd better try it. I don't know whether it's, it might, might be light and easygoing up to 14.5%, but um, might not be. Well, it smells quite rich, uh, dark, deep and plummy and pruney. Uh, not that light, easy-going, uh, cherry, um, cherry-ish, uh, uh, chillable Val Policello. It feels like it's, it wants to be a serious red wine, and it smells quite like a serious red wine. Uh, certainly, it has a strong Italian accent. It's got that, uh, yes, it has got a little bit of that cherry, but uh, rather than the, the red cherry, it's those dark cherries, slightly bitter edge to it too. And uh, it smells, um, it almost smells like one of those wines that you want to sit and sniff. Uh, the Val Policella's big brother, Amarone, they call it a vino di meditazione, a wine that you want to uh, meditate over. Uh, this is, it's not Amarone style, but it feels like it's going to have some of the Amarone richness. And I don't know whether they've achieved that by doing what they call the ripasso uh, process. Ripasso, the easiest way of describing it is uh, uh, you, uh, you, you make a cup of tea and then you stick an extra tea bag that someone else has used in there to try and get extra colour and extra flavour in there. Uh, I don't know if the people at Tedeschi would mind uh, uh, having their wine compared to uh, reusing a tea bag. But that's the way I think of it and that's why I, the way I explain it. If that doesn't make sense, tough. Yeah, deep, dark rich, juicy, and with this sour cherry bite, it's, um, it's actually quite a lot fresher than I expected it to be from the aromas and from that 14 and a half alcohol. You feel the alcohol, the, the warmth of the alcohol, uh, as it uh, descends the, uh, down the gullet. No, I'm not using the spittoon for this. Um, but then the flavour you're left with is quite fresh. Uh, there's a, a liveliness and a bounciness about it. Uh, so yes, there's, there's, there are some of those richer, plummy edges, but it's this finishes with this uh, bright cherry freshness. It's come out of a reasonably cool cellar, and um, at this temperature, uh, certainly you get that fresh edge. Uh, I also notice a little bit of tannin poking out, uh, not aggressively so. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens as it warms up. Um, it smells. Um, it smells like it's going to be. Uh, rather enjoyable. I've uh, got some uh, couple of steaks somewhere around. Actually, they're, they're, I don't know if you can see, they're sitting on a radiator behind uh, me because um, I didn't quite get them out of the freezer in time to uh, uh, to let them uh, to let them come to room temperature naturally. But uh, I think it's going to go down rather well with that. But that's going to be in about a couple of hours' time. So uh, by which time I think the wine will have uh, blossomed and be maybe not lost that fresh edge, but. Um, uh, certainly, it will have warmed up and those tannins, I think, will be a little less uh, noticeable. It's not that they're poking out at the moment, but uh, you do notice that, uh, that, that they are there. Uh, but in terms of the fruit flavours, that's the thing that's going to be interesting. Is it going to get bigger and plummier and lose some of that cherry freshness? Uh, I don't think it will do. I think it, I think that plummy and cherry, nice tension between the two will, will carry on. But it's a pretty decent wine, so I'm going to finish off the rest of this glass. Enjoy, and see you soon.